And welcome back. Thank you again for watching Sunday Brunch with Lubna. Our number is 855-886-6387, extension 4. And of course, our email address is right on the screen. And right now, we're talking to uh, two uh, amazing women here. Uh, obviously, we're talking to Nita, who is the HCC trustee. And obviously, we're talking to Andrea, and who is obviously a community outreach coordinator and who just educated us with all the different programs out there. Uh, really quickly, I, I wanted to ask you, Andrea, you know, I like the way you said one thing, that you don't have to be, if you're not a US citizen, it's not like you report anyone. Because what happens, and not just in, in, in our community, many times people don't want to go because they're afraid. You know, if we go, then they're gonna like report us, we'll get deported or something. So that's a very big, uh, I think a wonderful thing that if they're doing that. So thank yes. you for that. <laughs> okay, and uh, of course- Our mission is to serve. And right, it doesn't right. matter if the person, um, you know, as I said, was a citizen or just, recently came here and is living with even a cousin as right. long as they have a utility bill or something from that other person to show they right. live in Texas. Right. They can avail themselves of the right. services and we will never turn anyone away or there's no need to, no the need. state has no interest in no, reporting. Exactly. So see uh, those of you that are watching right now, see what you're learning through Sunday mm -hmm. Brunch, but uh, I think it's really important and I think, uh, you know, having um, a program like this, especially in Texas, and like I said, there are programs in different states that probably do mm -hmm. these things. You just have to, and plus the thing is TV1 right now, this is from Texas, so you kind of benefit from that. And of course, if you want to call in, you can always call this number and we will give you information for Andrea about the different clinics that you um, are ahead of, six different clinics right here in Houston where you can find out and we will help you with that because I think we should not you know, leave anyone behind because of that. Anyway, uh, now obviously we're um, introduced my two amazing guests, but now usually in my show, I do a little bit of a topic and the reason why I do a topic is because if I have a platform of TV1 having a, a platform which is being watched um, in US and Canada, so why not utilize it not just by introducing amazing people, but also uh, talking about something that will bring a change in the community. And even if it doesn't make a big difference to people, at least to one person, then I feel I've done my job. So today's topic is, and I know you both uh, do your volunteer work in your own different ways, and. Uh, the topic is volunteer uh, in the community and outside the community. How do you guys make time for that? And, and Nita, we'll start off with you. And I know in the beginning you said you have to balance your family, your job, and all that. How do you do this? How do you both do it? Let me ask you that. Well, I <laughs> think I think it is um, internal drive that okay. keeps us, um, you know, uh, moving forward with that balance in life. Mm -hmm. Because you have to allocate certain hours right. uh, for volunteering. Mm -hmm. Whatever work you want to do, whether paid or non-paid, right. but still it, you have to have passion for that. Right. And right. I think it comes down to that. And when you see the need in the society, you can see that no matter how much we allocate our time, right. there is so much to be done. Mm -hmm. And that keeps us doing, uh, uh, that keeps me involved more and more. Right. Uh, every bit of uh, help that we offer right. goes a long way of in course. somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it comes down to having a discipline Right. time management. Mm -hmm. You have to allocate certain, uh, maybe a couple of days or a few mm -hmm. hours a week uh, right. to give back and to help somebody, whether you just want to help somebody <laughs> write a resume or right. just help that person find a job. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a big, uh, it's not a rocket science. Right, it's mm -hmm. not very complicated. It's, about, it's a very simple thing, but it's just being able to take the time out to do it. Exactly. Uh, Listening to other people's stories and exactly. see how you can help them mm -hmm. uh, become successful in their personal lives or professional lives. Of and I agree with her. Your heart has to really be in it. Exactly. Right. Your heart it's has your to heart. Be in it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe more than your head more than <laughs> sometimes. Your head, right? Right. I think if your heart is really in it, and like she said, a passion for it, mm -hmm. then I think you're motivated more to maybe right. get up a little bit earlier right, or stay up mm -hmm. a little bit later and um, mm -hmm. do what you need to do to help others. Exactly. And, and the problem is, you know, you said how volunteer, obviously volunteering means you do not get money for it. I, mm -hmm. And I'll say this thing, which I probably now I'll get a lot of comments after <laughs> this and probably calling the head of TV1. The thing is people are so um, much into the whole concept. You know what? I'm not going to get paid for it. But you know, it's not always about being paid for something. something. Some things you do because you feel good doing. Like you said, putting your heart into it, taking that time out and understanding, you know what, I'm not gonna get paid for this, but you know what, I'm gonna make a difference, uh, be it in, in your own community, be it outside the community. And we were discussing before, you know, before we start helping other things, how about fixing things up in our backyard and then worry about other, other issues. You know, that's kind of important. And, and most of the time you get mm -hmm. back 
right. more than what you would put into it. Right. And you know, people who have never, and I know, and this is nothing personal to anyone, I know people who have never volunteered mm -hmm. in their life. There are people that I, not, I'm not going to say I know, but I have seen or I've heard about where they'll sit at home and watch some soap opera, an uh, Indian or Pakistan soap opera, or even like the American soap operas, and they're watching it. But that time, you could have helped somebody. You could have helped in a hospital. You could have helped in a, a food pantry. You could have helped in so many things. And the thing is, there are places you can go and volunteer. And the thing is, trying to do that. I think that's the bigger step. Just, Absolutely. just getting up and just trying to do it. Stop being lazy. No, I'm just kidding. But um, and the other thing is, do you think it's important to show the kids how to volunteer also? Well, what do you guys Abs think about that? Absolutely. Yes. And I agree with Andrea. I mm -hmm. think it starts with uh, if that drive has to start at home. So every right. parent has to be a role model right. for our kids to, mm -hmm. to kind of show that it's not about just your own studies or your own food or shelter. Right. It's about going over and beyond right. and helping others. Uh, and I think you're right. The, the kids need to volunteer a lot more. They can be great uh, mentors for younger students. Right. At mm -hmm. HCC, we do have our students mentoring. Uh, they go in high schools uh, right. or elementary schools, help them with their math uh, of work course, or any course. science projects, mm -hmm. and that helps them. Uh, they, that helps them grow as well because mm -hmm. they understand how when you teach somebody or you give something, uh, you know your the great expertise. Feeling, right, and the great you, you, it helps you grow uh, personally as well. Of so it's a win-win for everyone. Personally, just as a personal story, I grew up yes. in a very um, impoverished area of the United States. It's called Appalachia. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And one of my grandmothers actually didn't have running water inside the house until the 70s. Oh, wow. Almost the mm -hmm. 80s. Mm -hmm. um, and my mother, however, uh, and very little education in her family. Right. My sister and I were the first to go to college. A lot of them didn't graduate from high school. Right. So um, my mother, though, however, had my sister and I go out to nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did not know anyone in the nursing home. But play the still, piano or play mm -hmm. the flute for them or sing for them or do things for a family to take them to the den the children to the dentist just out of her right. own goodness of her own heart just right. to volunteer and I think when you see that growing up exactly. even if you don't have a tremendous amount uh, um, a material wealth mm -hmm. it doesn't take that right and I know people think well to volunteer you know I need I won't get paid right but exactly. you don't need a lot of wealth or anything to mm -hmm. just offer your own time right. to people who are less fortunate than you, no matter what your circumstances. There are always many, many people right. less fortunate than you that mm -hmm. you can help, and it will all come back to you. It's okay. almost like a mission mm -hmm. um, and a fervor that people can feel, and then it all comes back to you, maybe twofold. Right. And, and you know, and what you're saying, it makes a, a lot of sense. And, you know, thank you for sharing your story with us. But, you know, what I have also seen is that, and again, this is not just, um, I'm not talking just about our community, I mean different communities. The time you have, that extra time, I'm going to talk to the men and the women. If you have that extra time, you'll sit at home and watch a, a baseball game. If you're sitting at home, you'll be sitting on the phone and talking, gossiping about people. But for God, for heaven's sake, you know, instead of doing that, take time out, go volunteer. And then, like, like we are discussing, you know, making the children do it. I mean, I know kids are like nowadays, oh, you know, we're too tired. Plus, their schedules are very, I mean, that is one thing. Uh, um, exactly. That they are very busy with their schedules, the homework nowadays. It's a lot, a lot of work. But the thing is, if you teach them at a younger age, and you as a role model, if you're doing it, mm -hmm. then you know what? Your kid is going to see that and say, you know what? Mom is doing it. And then if dad is doing it too, then it, it becomes like a whole family event. Well, what do you think? Like making the whole family go and volunteer. Absolutely. And it builds a sense of community that right. you belong to because mm -hmm. you want to see your neighbors uh, safe and sound. Right. You don't want to have uh, gun violence there because students are not well educated. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure every child has a right kinds of uh, education, moral values, and right. support. Mm -hmm. And it goes beyond any household, and it is for the whole community as a whole. So I think everybody has to mm -hmm. see uh, this issue or this uh, aspect uh, beyond their own personal beliefs. Right. Because it is, we mm -hmm. live in a society. We are not living in, uh, you right. know, you can't operate in a mm -hmm. silo. So I know, but the money for Thanksgiving to go out and help feed the homeless exactly. and things like that. Whole exactly. families get together exactly. and do things like that as you know, their, um, their little thing to do every Thanksgiving to make it a routine. Exactly. And then they can, and they can probably appreciate Thanksgiving more than if they were just sitting at the table eating mm -hmm. right. all day and watching football. Of course. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's funny you're saying that. Um, 
at my kids' karate school, uh, me and a friend of uh, we both started this thing where we made homeless uh, bags for the homeless. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, you know, you, you, I think of, and I have all these great ideas. I just hope one day I can and do those things. So we planned, okay, you know, this many people will bring uh, washcloths, and some water bottles, sanitizers. Uh, they'll bring uh, like a little candy bar, like you know, a little. I mean, it's it's not like I'm, we were giving them a home, but. The point was we were helping out, so right. we made that. We had the uh, parents, and then somehow we ended up making like I think 72, and it was like one of those big Ziploc bags, 72 of those, those packages, uh -huh. and each kid got one, and they got to write a little note saying it. But that that good feeling mm -hmm. that the kids get. Anyway, uh, I know you're all not getting a good feeling now because we're going on break, but we'll be right back <laughs> after this. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>